Hello, it's Wednesday, February the 16th. We're in Revelation chapter 11. Uh, we've seen John uh, being given a reed and measuring the temple, uh, but not the outside. And then uh, the proclamation and prophecy of two witnesses, the lampstands uh, and the constant supply of uh, olive oil from the two olive trees, the background being in the book of Zechariah. Uh, the church in the world, uh, but, but supplied by the strength and power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in verse 6, uh, they have power to shut, um, they have power to shut the sky that no rain may fall during the days uh, of their prophesying, and they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. Well, there are two allusions here, and, and they're not uh, difficult to uh, grasp as to what's going on. One is Elijah, uh, of course, uh, stopping the rain for three and a half years. Uh, and then uh, uh, the other one is Moses uh, during the plagues, uh, turning the water of the River Nile uh, into blood. Two great Old Testament uh, prophets uh, proclaiming, uh, proclaiming, uh, the power of God to intervene. Uh, there's a principle here that uh, in the mouth of two witnesses, a thing is true. And in a sense, uh, this is a picture of the church, that the church can never be destroyed, no matter how, um, how difficult, how terrible uh, the opposition may be. And the church is built in enemy-occupied territory, in the uh, precincts of the gates of hell, uh, the ongoing proclamation of the gospel and the intervention of the power and sovereignty uh, of God the Holy Spirit, uh, witnesses witnessed by Moses and Elijah being the two great examples of God supernaturally uh, inter intervening. And then in verse 7, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. Uh, there's references here in the verses that follow to three great cities where evil uh, was done, Sodom, uh, Egypt uh, as a country, and Jerusalem uh, where Christ was crucified. It's a, it's a picture of the world uh, that we live in. Uh, and, and this uh, is something uh, that is for three and a half days, a very short period of time. Uh, again, this is this is symbolic. There, the, it, it might be depicting uh, that towards the end, uh, before the return of Christ, that great uh, evil uh, will prevail uh, for a short period, but then there will follow something like a resurrection and an intervention of God. And perhaps this is a picture, not so much of something at the end of history, but something that happens well again and again and again. Uh, periods of darkness, periods of destruction, periods of opposition, but then periods in which God intervenes, as it were, and comes and restores and rescues the church, uh, like the Reformation, like the Great Awakening, like periods of revival, like what's gone on, uh, for example, in, in China uh, right now, uh, an enormous restoration of the underground church in China amidst uh, great evil. So perhaps this is a principle. Um, look beyond the figures of speech and, and, and so on and see, see the principle that in the midst of darkness, uh, great good and great benefit and great blessing and great revival can come. Well, uh, we'll look at Revelation 11 one more time uh, tomorrow, but for now, have a wonderful day.